Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. The war in Israel continues to escalate to higher levels, but what is really behind all this? How is it connected to Bible prophecy today? What are the forces really operating here behind the scenes? Revelation, Hidgalut 12, verse 9. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the world astray. He has hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Those angels are demonic spirits, fallen angels, the demons. And two of these main demons are identified as Amalek and the Chaldean spirit. The battle has always been about Israel, spiritually Israel, physical Israel. When Israel was released from bondage and they were in the desert, they were attacked by Amalek. And God said in Exodus chapter 17, verse 16, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That war continues until Yeshua returns. Amalek tried to stop Israel from making it to the promised land, and he's trying to stop you and I, those under the blood of Yeshua, to make it to the promised land. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Yerushalayim, the new Jerusalem. That's what the battle is all about. People like to ask, when is the war going to end? And I said, it's not going to end because God said, He'll have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But he gives a promise in the scriptures. And the promise is that he's going to wipe out the name of Amalek from under heaven. But until that time, the spiritual war continues, which impacts the physical, the land of Israel. But there's another ancient god, ancient demon in the Bible. And that demon is operating through many kings and many nations throughout generations. I will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That spirit is called Persia, known today as modern-day Iran. In the book of Daniel, we read that Daniel is seeking revelation regarding Israel. And Daniel is praying, and the revelation doesn't come. And then suddenly we read in Daniel, chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. So we can see here that sometimes we pray to God and we do not think that God is hearing us. But God says, I hear your prayers, but sometimes there's spiritual warfare. Look at Daniel 10 verse 13. But the prince of Persia kingdom resisted me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So we can see here that the king of Persia, which is a demonic spirit, known today as Iran, delayed the prayers of Daniel. There was spiritual warfare in the second heaven. You may be asking, what does it say in the Bible that there was a second heaven? We read Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I knew a man in Yeshua, in Christ, who for 14 years ago was cut up to the third heaven. Whether in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. So you see here that there is a third heaven. And if there's a third heaven, there is a second heaven. And we know that's where the spiritual warfare is. That's where the delay of the king of Persia was for 21 days. That's where the battle was. It couldn't be in the third heaven because the third heaven is the kingdom. And Satan and his demons were tossed out. They no longer have access to the kingdom. And by the way, just to gain some context, the one that went to the third heaven is Paul himself. So we can see here that the war against Israel from generation to generation continues. What we see now in Hezbollah, in Hamas, this is just the king of Persia operating under demonic spirits, the Chaldean spirit, the Amalek spirit, and the king of Persia trying to delay God's plan. But no one can stop the gospel. No one can stop God's plan. People like to ask me, do I think that Israel is going to be wiped out? And I say, absolutely not. No one can wipe out Israel. Thus says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Hezbollah, not the king of Persia, not Hamas, not Hitler, not Haman, not Osama bin Laden. No one can stop the gospel and no one can destroy Israel. The only one that's going to destroy physical Israel is God on judgment day because he said this world is going to pass. We look for the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, new Shalim. That's why it's so important that the gospel be preached. So people like to ask me, how is this war in Israel connected to Bible prophecy? It's all Bible prophecy. It started in the garden and it's going to end in the garden where Yeshua brings everything. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. 
Here's God's plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under one authority of Yeshua, everything in heaven and on earth. God is going to restore everything that the enemy has stolen. Everything is going to be back to the garden. That's where you and I are going to be forever and evermore. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. And this demonic spirit of Persia who is trying to stop Israel, trying to stop the gospel, trying to destroy the land of Israel will never succeed. Thus says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Having said that, we are heartbroken about the situation in Gaza. We are heartbroken about the situation in the north of Israel with Hezbollah. Yes, there's casualties. Yes, soldiers are dying. Yes, the land of Israel is going through strong physical and spiritual war. But one thing is certain, Israel will stand forever. Yeshua's feet will land on the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. And the one that's funding Hezbollah, the one that's funding Hamas, is Iran, the king of Persia, the same demonic spirit that delayed the prayers of Daniel for 21 days, the same demonic spirit that was in Haman and tried to destroy the Israelites. Our duty as believers in Yeshua is to seek first the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel, to stand firm. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of people of God. Hidgalut, Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments, his word, and remain faithful to Yeshua, to Jesus. That's what it's all about. The gospel must go forth. Continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, available only through Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, who said it with his own mouth, no one makes it to the Father, but only through me. What is going to be the outcome of all those who go against Israel? What is going to be the outcome of all the nations who vote against Israel? What is going to be the outcome of a sinwar? What is going to be the outcome of Hezbollah? And what is going to be the outcome of Amalek and the king of Persia, Iran? Obadiah chapter 1 verse 15. The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. And in Hebrew, it's very clear that it's speaking here about the nation of Israel. As you have done to Israel will be done to you. That is the outcome of all these demonic spirits. That is the biblical pattern in the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3. For the day is near. The day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. All those that are going and went against Israel will pay the price. Our duty is to continue to stand firm and to preach the gospel, to preach the love of Yeshua. Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 25, and I'm paraphrasing. For God said, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Everything that has been stripped from the people of God, God will restore. Stand with us here in Israel with Messiah of Israel Ministries as we continue to comfort the war victims, the IDF soldiers, and all those who were injured and all those who need the love of Yeshua and the gospel. We will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Achekol Israel Ivasha, until all Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, 26. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, Jesus, her Yeshua like a blazing torch. And he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, Al Yehuda, with fire in his eyes to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Borat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. The days of Amalek and the days of the king of Persia are numbered. Those just joining us at home, I'm going to introduce this week's special guests. Born and raised in Israel, he served several years in the Israeli Defense Forces and is the founder and director of Messiah of Israel Ministries, Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat. Good to have you back. 
Dr. Tom Horn, who is the CEO of Skywatch TV, an acclaimed best-selling author himself, raves about Blood Alliance. He says, Messianic Rabbi Zeph Perat has done it again. In Blood Alliance, he's taken several deep mysteries of God's Word and served them up in a thoroughly understandable, engrossing, and biblically contextual manner. I assure you, he says, once you see the truths that Zev brings into glorious revelation, you'll soon begin to recognize those truths throughout the scriptures, hidden in plain sight from first to last. Blood Alliance is an absolute treasure trove. Have you ever heard of God's threshold covenant? If you haven't, you're in for a roller coaster ride of biblical discovery that will enhance your understanding of God's Word and the application of it to your daily life like never before. Messianic Rabbi Zef Parad will be taking you on a much deeper dive than you've probably ever previously experienced. In Blood Alliance, you'll come to understand the true nature of spiritual warfare like never before. You'll uncover the biblical truth about long-held traditions that still assault God's truth and His grace to this very day, throwing massive doctrinal confusion into almost the entire modern Christian church world. Finally, learn the truth about the temple on the Temple Mount and what the Old Testament and New Testament clearly lay out for the last days. Shocking surprises await you. This truly is a life-changing book to the glory of Yeshua, Jesus.